Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Metal Mastermind. I am your host, Ken Candelas, and I am joined by... Jason Stallworth. I almost <laughs> forgot my name again, dude. <laughs> so, sorry for the wait, guys. Oh, uh, man. Little, yeah. little funny hiccup there. We actually were streaming to Twitch accidentally. <laughs> so, <laughs> we are always, always finding something uh, to, to crack up on, which is hilarious. So... Good to see you guys. Um, uh, Jason, we haven't been uh, on live stream for two weeks now, right? Uh, it's uh, the last time we were on. Um, we took a break uh, last week and we were on the week before, which means that we are we are starting. This is our new schedule now. We're going to be doing live streams every other week instead of every week. Yeah. Uh, in order to give some more room for content creation and blogging and stuff like that, we're really giving you guys a lot of juicy content on the website. So be sure you're checking that out on metalmastermind.com. You are, man. So, yeah, there's um, a lot of good stuff out there. Yes. Now, uh, since there has been so much time, uh, Jason, what have you been up to, brother? Like, tell me a little bit about your two weeks. Well, dude, so first of all, um, and I think most everyone watching this right now caught the video we just put out uh on amp sims and you know i just put out a video on how to get a good tone using just about any amp sim or how to use a usable get a usable tone anyway because mm. uh a lot of us and ken this is something we'll talk about more in depth and with with production and all in general i think a lot of times we get caught up in the gear and like okay we've got this thing but then the next version or something greater comes out next week or next month and we're like well now i've got to have this and we let these things keep us from working and you know the music's not getting written the music's not getting recording recorded because we're fiddling around with gear all the time so that was kind of the purpose of that just give people like a really good starting point uh but dude other than that man i'm just i'm i'm trying to write lyrics for my album this was going to be an instrumental album uh, i know ken and i guys are in the middle of both creating an album <laughs> so we're going to have a buttload of music to share with you guys uh in a few months or close probably into 2021 but uh, you know, I was going to write an instrumental album and then I survey for, you know, from my audience and everybody's like, you know, we want lyrics, dude. You put out masterpiece of lyrics. We want those death metal vocals. So I'm like, okay. I was like really <laughs> humbled by that. I'm like, well, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> so well, there's going to be a couple of instrumentals. I even got, a, I've, I've got an acoustic instrumental on, on that, on that album. Wow. Now, but I'm that's cool. Right now, you know, yeah, it'll be kind of cool. Yeah, I had, I had I, a really good friend of mine play the bongos on that track. And uh, last it. thing I've been up to, um, and I think uh, all my YouTube subscribers for my my per, my other, my artist channel know, I'm actually doing a live acoustic gig this Saturday. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I've got some old 80s stuff like Aerosmith's Angel, uh, Iron Maiden's um, Wasted Years. I'm doing acoustic uh, covers of a lot of those types of songs, man. So uh, yeah, oh, yeah, we're gonna start out like man. that and everything. Just me and the acoustic. I love that. And, uh, I'm playing in a friend <laughs> friend of mine's vape shop. You know the what this whole pandemic that? thing, like. Yeah, so I love that song. <laughs> Sorry. Oh man, I remember seeing. No, no. I remember <clears throat> seeing Maiden live, man, and they were fantastic. Oh my god, they yeah, they really. I'd love to see them. They they instill the whole. <laughs> I want to be a freaking rock star in you, man. Yeah. They really do. Oh, yeah. So, Jason, that's awesome, man. Because um, one, I love metal albums that feature an acoustic. <laughs> I yeah. think it just, just creates a dynamic it, that it's just you it's unmatched when you introduce an acoustic guitar and that's great man people love vocals and you have a very distinct vocal tone uh, I find it that it's easier to actually understand the words with your vocal tone some vocalists oh, it's you, very dude. very that's hard to like you know get the uh, intelligibility right um, you know you, you yeah. just think of um, topsy or something you know <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> just mud <laughs> of yeah. words and it's just like okay unless you read the lyrics and you're just like i had no idea what this guy just said <laughs> so um that's that's hilarious and, and something about my mom i don't know <laughs> <laughs> don't talk about my mom <laughs> now um yeah love that man because you know when you're when you're like developing as an artist, and this makes like a really, really great point. When you're developing as an artist, sometimes you stretch the boundaries of your comfort zone, right? And you're oh, kind of, yes, you're kind of you like, do. you're, you're yes. always doing your thing. And if you're known to do instrumentals and you're a great guitarist, um, yeah. reaching out past that into something new 
you're, it's kind of a worrisome act because you're like, will they like it? Will I lose oh, people over it? It's scary as hell, man. You're vulnerable. Yeah. You're exposed. So you're vulnerable. You nailed it right there. You you, you make yourself vulnerable, dude. Hey, man, yeah. you just leveled up your game by doing that. That's fantastic. Yeah. So congratulations to you. And I love to hear that, you know, your fans are absolutely looking forward to another album with lyrics on it, man. Like, yeah, good job. Too, dude. So <laughs> that... That just puts a little bit more, um, you know, in your favor, right? You you don't have to just be known for doing uh, guitar work, which is it, what you're absolutely well known for. Uh, but now you're also you have a recognizable timbre uh, of vocals, which which is great. Yeah, that's a good thing. Right? It's a signature so thing. Nobody can do the vocals that you can do, right? Um, so, just thought I'd put that out there uh, as you guys are going through your journey. Just Never be too scared to try something new. Um, I think within reason, right? You know, if you're going to do something that relates to what your music is all about, in this case, being a guitarist and then trying vocals um, for the same type of genre is very, very doable. Uh, and it makes a lot of sense. And it's challenging, right? Doing it's and extremely that, challenging. Absolutely. As you're going to go yeah. forward making like music, you know, thinking about yeah. live, Jason, we've talked about this before, and we've got a video coming up offline uh, talking about writing metal vocals, where it's going yes. to it's going to um, challenge you as to well, if you're writing vocals, are you playing the instrument as well, right? And that becomes a new thing that you have to keep in mind as you move forward with your creative process. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of really juicy information in that video. And if you haven't already checked out the live session before, you should go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, that was a good session, man. So, dude, what's going on with the Ken, man? I mean, I know you've been super busy and um, you know, I want to hear more more about Homeric before we get into this today's topic, man. man um, I know that's that's a brand. That's more than <clears throat> just a band now. Homeric is a brand. That is that is true. Um well, Homeric is just very much undergoing um, the uh, mixing and editing process right now, um, working with people that I idolize <laughs> is actually a blessing. I don't want to say mm -hmm. who they are yet, uh, just okay. for just for PR's sake, want to make sure everything's all, wait, though, all man, clean and Gucci on this front. So, <laughs> But I've uh, been working with yeah. some really notable people that I'm really, really excited yeah. to share about, so I will... Uh, eventually and uh, the idea is actually right now um, we're already uh, starting to look at uh, the makings of album three um, so nice we're gonna dude, start nice. we already laid some some of that foundation uh, in terms of the the, the story because it's bigger than just music my project has a lot of uh, music involved but it's also uh, storytelling there's a book and there's also artwork so all of that is like always in the works, coming together. It takes a long time to do. Just the artwork alone, like it takes him months. <laughs> you know, he's making these. Yeah. Uh, the the artist David Milgate is um, he 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 does the comics for Judge Dredd, and he's Ooh. making these paintings that uh, that are just like these giant, like big, like format paintings that exhibit the entire Dante's Inferno story. So, you know, just imagine it's, it's just super immersive artwork that as you listen to the music and you read the story, you're kind of looking at these yeah. graphic novel like paintings that really tell the story. So it's very exciting, man. That's, you know, as much as I want to talk more about it, this is obviously not going to yeah. be an episode about Homeric, <laughs> but there is so much in the works. Very excited where things are going. Lots to do. Uh, probably going to be staying up all night <laughs> just working on that. That's um, what it takes, man. But yeah, yeah this takes. is this is all part of the, the process, right? You, you Sometimes the creative process will take a very long time. And yeah. I don't I think it's important as a you know, as a mental state uh, uh, being a musician, not to beat yourself down too much if things take too long, because yeah. as long as you're moving that needle forward, you know, depending on the ambition of the project, things have you have to be reasonable with what you can do. Um, but you can't be lazy enough to not make it happen. Right. There has to be a balance. 
You know, you got, you got, you know, I, I love, by the way, like, you know, entrepreneurs like Gary Vaynerchuk and stuff. But he's Gary, great. Dude, but yeah. yeah, but there's also some things about Gary Vaynerchuk that is not going to be for everybody. Right. Not everybody is going to want to work 16 hours a day like Gary does. Um, some people need a little bit more balance in their life because otherwise, you know, you actually go down a wormhole of depression for yourself. Um, and I've tried that, you know, it, and it didn't work the same way for me. There's actually a study that I will point out um, that people and I, this was, a, I think, a, 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 I forgot exactly who did this. So but the study goes something along the lines of this. People who actually took breaks ended up being way more productive with the time that they had, right? Um, the idea is that you come back refreshed, um, not so yeah. drained, you know, because as you're, if you're working 16 hours a day, that could be working 16 hours a day and feeling drained and not getting too much done because you're slow and you're sagging behind. Um, yeah. So you need to take care of the body in order to do that. Um, there's also another saying where, well, People are as productive with the time that they're given, right? So if you give somebody a project to do within 12 hours and you give that person the same project to do within six hours, they will get it done within that allotted amount of time, right? So if it's going to take 12 hours, okay, they may kind of go take more coffee breaks, you know, or whatever. Yeah. The person doing the six hour will be a little bit more having to just jam out work, jam out working stuff uh, through, you know, the day. Um, so giving yourself that time becomes very imperative to how productive you can be. But you have to be also diligent as to keeping other moments for yourself to recover so that you can come back refreshed and work on it strong again the next day. I'd rather have a little bit more tank uh, a little bit more gas in my tank and during the day than always running on empty so yeah. you know it's kind of like it does damage to the engine you, and if you have no engine the car ain't running um yeah. right so what are your thoughts well, that, well that's those thoughts are so powerful mm. and here's the thing it's easy to mistake movement for progress yes it's very easy to mistake movement. Just because you're doing something doesn't mean you're going places. You can sit there and and run in place and just just all out and you don't go anywhere. And this is something I learned working in corporate America. Right. People I was in a I was in an environment where people boasted about, well, I worked twelve hours yesterday. Well, I didn't work 12 hours. I did 14 hours yesterday. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I'm like, you know what? I don't want anything that you produced that day because it's going to be garbage because there's no way you can focus on something for that long and produce something that's quality. Yeah. Here's, here's my two cents on that though. And it's going right along with what you said is first of all, you have to find the balance. You have to find a balance that works for you. And I will say this guys, there are seasons. Okay. There are seasons. There might be a week where, Hey, push is coming to shove. You've got a project you're doing. This album needs to be done. You may bust your ass for 12 hours a day for five days in a row, let's say, but then that is not sustainable to keep doing right. So at some point you got to say, okay, you know what? Now we've made it this far. I'm going to reward myself. Uh, right. Ken, I'm, I'm like you though. I need a balance, man. I like to drink some craft beers. I like to just yeah. sit on the patio and, and play acoustic and BS. And you know, you and I like to chat about stuff. And so it's like you, you need a balance. Uh, what, what I'll say though, is at the same time though, at the same time, don't let yourself make excuses for not getting the work done. So there's, there's an, ex, you know, either extreme can kind of be damaging. Well, one extreme, you won't just, you won't do anything. You always find excuses Eh, you know, I need my balance. I'm not going to do it. The other extreme is you're going to stress yourself out and what you produce may not be, it may not be the same quality as if you just kind of relax a little bit more and took your time and, you know, and not overthink the process. So yeah, this is a, uh, this hits home for me, man, because like I said, working in the corporate world for, you know, over 14 years, uh, we were always just enslaved with that. Well, you got to work more. You got to do more. You got to work more. And, and uh, you know, again, it just wasn't it wasn't efficient. And uh, like you said, you gave the scenario, give somebody 12 hours, do something and give that give the next person six hours. 
the person that has six hours to do it, what they're going to do is they're going to eliminate a lot of the busy crap that doesn't matter. Right. And they're going to focus on the things. Exactly. So, right. Very because, good point. Yeah. Because if, you, if, you, if you're given 12 hours, you're going to fill up that 12 hours with other stuff. It's not like you're going to be just working on that. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, exactly. Um, yeah. instead of a 30 minutes lunch break, you take an hour, you know. <laughs> so well, there's a there's a time perception there, too. If, exactly. if somebody says, well, you, you've got this to do and I'm going to give you 12 hours to do it you kind of tend to make it bigger than what it really is. Yeah, the urgency right? is there. Yeah, yeah, the urgency. So if, if someone says, hey, you've got six hours to do it or even two hours to do it, then you're going to really sit down and say, okay, this is what needs to be done. Here's what I need to do to do it. And I've got two hours. I'm going to knock it out. Yeah. 12 and hours. You're going to find other stuff to do. You're going to overthink the process. And it's, you know. <laughs> I, would, I would challenge you guys to do that in your own music. Um if instead of working, saying that you're working six hours on your music, right? Yeah. Give yourself two hours and make very specific goals of what you're trying to do. That's it. Within those right two there. hours, right? So yeah. uh, whether that's going to be writing down lyrics, okay, give yourself two hours to write lyrics. Giving that little bit of time pressure to say, okay, now I'm just going to be much more like focused on trying to actually get this done. Um, that makes the world of a difference. The perception of everything is, well, in business, it's 90% of the entire business. It's perception. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it, it is. Um, and guys, that is something I hope you guys take away from this, if anything, uh, of what we talk about. Because um, the mindset right, is so big in everything that we do. Um, yeah. I want to mention Newtonian time versus Einstein time. Um, I believe this came from a book called The Big Leap. Um, I think Leah may have mentioned that to us as a book to read some I time ago. Did, yeah. But The Big Leap yeah. is, is, is a wonderful book, and they mentioned this concept where Newtonian time is about confining yourself to the hours that you're given and not being able to overcome sort of that barrier because we have a finite amount of hours within a day. Um, whereas Einstein time, well, if we think back to Einstein and about uh, space-time warping, right, around what we're doing, um, the perception changes because with the time that you are given, now you're making the most out of it. And it almost seems like you're into like sort of an overdrive and making the most of the time, which, mean, which may, almost seems like you've had more time <laughs> to do it. You're making the time to ha make it happen. Um, in a sense, think about it this way. It's like, okay, well, um, okay, I work a nine to five job. You know, I have kids and I have to cook dinner and all this stuff. That's the Newtonian aspect of that, where it's like, okay, I, I have all these obstacles, right? If you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them, right? Yes, we've said that before, dude. Absolutely, right? So that's Newtonian <laughs> time. Einstein yep. time begs the question of, okay, I've got all this stuff. This is, this is the universe that it exists, but there's a couple of places where I could snag some things in there and do stuff, right? That's how do I make it happen? And then it's like, okay, well, I noticed that I have, you know, I have a tendency to watch Netflix during this amount of time, uh, during yeah. this time at the night. And that's like, okay, well, I'm going to replace that Netflix instead with doing something else and maximizing yeah. that time on my own dreams and goals. Um, that's a big part of it. Right. So, huge. yeah, it, it, it so changes the way you look at the world, like significantly, if you if you really yeah. grasp that kind of uh, pers uh, point of view. Um, so along with that. Right. How do you maintain, you know, amongst the sanity you're, and insanity that you're, you're you're fighting in the battles with your health? Right. And, you know. Jason, what are some suggestions? What, what have you done in order to keep yourself in a good headspace physically, right, to prepare you? Because I feel like the body sort of has to equate to what the mind is doing. If the body it is does. not feeling well, the mind is also not going to feel well because, well, it's your body, right? Your body, it's got no gas. The mind doesn't have enough fuel to run to make its make its uh, pr productivity happen. So you want to shine a light on that? 
Yeah, yeah. I'll give you guys just a very short rundown. Uh, before we jump into that, you know, guys, this is all about mind, body, and health, and of course, metal. Uh, I want to say I wasted time last night that I should not have wasted, and I'll give you guys an example of time wasting. I watched the presidential debate last night and I wasted an hour and a half of my life that I'll never get back. Oh, and man. when I, and I, I'm not, a, you know, and I know some people are political, some aren't, I get that, but uh, I, I am not by any, any means. Uh, but what I thought this morning, I'm like, you know, I could have written a blog post in that hour and a half and that blog post, or I could have written a piece of music and that piece of music, those things would be published out there for the world to hear going forward for all eternity. But yeah. instead, I chose to watch something, and it, who cares if it's the debate or not? It could have been anything. I chose to spend that amount of time on something that, for me, it's not really relevant. You know what I mean? Um, and there is a time to just sit back and chill and watch, like like I do. My wife and I watch Netflix at night. Sometimes we'll watch a show or whatever uh, about thirty minutes before I go to bed, and that's kind of a calming. You know, it's like right. it's like I'm a dog, and that's my calming treat. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so before I go to bed, and uh, but I'm usually doing yoga while we're doing that. So anyway, so so to move forward, guys, I I personally feel and I'm not saying everybody has to be like a bodybuilder or a power lifter, power lifter. But I'm, I'm personally feel that people should do some sort of strength training for their body. So this is something that I got into when I was 14, about 14 years old, right before I picked up the guitar, I kind of got into the bodybuilding thing. And I don't compete or anything. And I've never been like the, you know, the big 250 pound guy on stage or anything like that. But what that does a couple of things one thing it gives you confidence i know that a lot of us metal musicians and people into metal in general one of the things that we all have we struggle with confidence somewhere along the line and maybe we still do today a little bit i still do sometimes i'll admit and uh because you got to think this is the common ground we have being a metalhead that we were drawn to that that style of music because it wasn't the norm and that is because we didn't fit in with the norm. You know, we didn't fit in with everybody else, the majority of people. And, and there was just something inside of us that was different and we just didn't fit that mold. So sometimes that can affect your confidence. And for me, it did. So lifting weights and resistance training actually helped boost that for me. I, I started doing that as a means to an end. So I wouldn't get picked on. I was a skinny guy and, you know, a little guy or whatever. And uh, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm going to show them, but it turned into a passion. So the first thing that I do, part of my morning routine, the first thing I do, I wake up, you know, four, four thirty, whatever, and I go to the gym and I train for an hour and a half, sometimes two hours. You know, I do some strength training and and then do a little bit of cardio. I'm I'm old, I'm forty five, so cardio has to be in there <laughs> for guys mm -hmm. like me, you know. But um, I, I go through a bodybuilding routine, the strength strength training routine, five sometimes six days a week, and that that might be overkill for a lot of you if you just did three days a week. But what that does, starting your day out with that. Or you may, you may not be able to do it in the morning. I, I encourage you to if you can, if your schedule will allow it, or if you can just wake up an hour early and go go hit it. Uh, but really starting that in the first thing in the morning, I get the hardest thing done first thing. And then that sets the tone, no pun intended, we're talking about music, that sets the tone for the rest of my day. So that's that's one thing. And it also just keeps you healthy. It keeps it helps keep your body fat down. I mean, and I know everybody's genetically built different, but it builds muscle tone. It, it builds, uh, it strengthens your joints. It's going to strengthen your bones. It's going to prevent you from hurting yourself really bad when you get older. You know, a lot of older people fall, uh, right. you know, and I see a lot of older people in the gym strength training for that very reason. Uh, I was talking to a guy, this guy Lou today, he's, he's in his seventies, um, or late sixties, early seventies. And he, he used to train with Arnold back in the day, man. Real cool guy. Wow. Uh, he's, he's, like he Schwarzenegger? Still wears the, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's trained with him before. And he still wears yeah. the old school, really short shorts <laughs> and like the half cut off shirt, you know. <laughs> so, and it's, uh, you know, but I was talking to him and he's in such great shape <laughs> and moving around. And, and then I see people my age in their 40s and younger that can barely get off the couch and walk. Yeah, so, man. yeah, there, there's a direct tie in being a successful musician or successful anything there's a direct tie to that and mastering your own body and mind as well like we're talking about i feel like that's one of the biggest that's obstacles kind of that anybody has to come overcome it is right it's it's yeah, essentially it overcoming yourself um i struggle i struggle with that mentally too you know um like i i don't i don't do nearly as 
intense of a workout as Jason here does, but I, I do uh, some cardio, uh, and most of the time it'll be maybe a little bit of core um, because I have lower back pain, so me working on that helps me to strengthen that part of my body after lifting speakers a lot with my business. Oh, dude. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> um, But most of my focus becomes also on meditation, so I'm much more on the mindset meditation side. Jason's definitely more of a physical build body uh, type of person. So I love the balance of that here. Um, and I, I do find it amazing, you know, that someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's a great example of this, is just mind, body, and spirit, right? He's really mastered his his body. Obviously, he was, you know, what, what was the, that, that award he was like? Just, uh, yeah, he was Mr. Olympia. I yeah, think, six yeah. Time Mr. Olympia yeah. back in the day. And that's, a, that's not a title they just hand out. That's exactly. a tough thing to get. You know, um, he's like, I'm proud. You know, <laughs> he's just doing yeah, exactly. his. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, got his, he's got his physical body uh, in shape, uh, and his mind is focused, right? He, he tackles. You know, the guy's the Terminator, man. Literally, yeah. he's the Terminator. Um, and, you know, from everybody that I've heard who's ever met the guy, the guy's spirit is so heartwarming and loving. He actually takes more time to talk to the individual than he's supposed to. He literally, uh, if I remember uh, a show with Gabriel Iglesias, the comedian, yeah. who was, you know, he went to, to go meet Arnold Schwarzenegger and he was shaking his hand and all this stuff. And, you know, Arnold is you know, greeting and talking with his, his folks. And he has literally a security guard right behind him who has to tap him on the shoulder and say, next person, next person. <laughs> Cause he keeps, <laughs> he great, keeps dude. always spending too much time talking and really getting yeah. to know this person uh, that he, that he's conversing with. So I love that about Arnold. One of my idols, one of the people that I look up to in terms of who to aspire to, you know, sure. You know, he's got, you know, maybe a scandal here with a maid in his home, but you know what? Yeah. No one's perfect, I think perfect, everybody's man. got a scandal. If no you one's perfect, it. man. I, You know, the guy has done yeah. so much good for this world that, like, you, you got to, in some some cases, you, you got to overlook some of those things. There's, By the way, there was always going to be haters. There's always going to be haters, right? So There's always. <laughs> you know, I talk, mean, talk to us about haters, Ken, real quick. If we, we can, just... If we can spend, because we're talking about the mental strength here. We're talking about mind and body. And, uh, you know, you and I just talked about this. We we both had some haters this week, so. <laughs> we have, right? Uh, well, my my experience this week was um, after launching my new uh, video series on Homeric. So we're, I'm going to be, you know, since I've been doing Metal Mastermind here, I've s slowly turned that also over into content to do for Homeric. Um, well, the first video I put out one of my ex-bandmates starts talking smack and i'm like wow <laughs> you know like because a, a year and a half ago i had fired everybody i said you know like this is just not working out and there's a whole that was the, what the video was about it was actually detailing what happened to the audience not in a way to slander what they did but to explain why things took longer in my creative process right it wasn't at all a video to get back at them it was a video to for my audience to know what happened. Where did everything go? I suddenly went quiet for a year. So that was my reintroduction. And the first thing I get is like, oh man, you, you, you're a liar, you're doing this, you're whatever. I'm just like, man, <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> the world is not about you, man. It's what I'm trying to do here with my music is provide something for the rest of the world and that's what my my project was always about um the problem that i had with my band was that there were too many egos wanting to get a piece of the pie and they felt vain in doing that um that's not what i wanted that's not what this was about they thought the band was about the people involved in the band that it wasn't the mission to create art music, story for the world to experience over and over. It was an entire thing. I was creating an entire world for everybody to enjoy after. So they, 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 they just didn't see that. They didn't see it that way. 
Um, so, but yeah, I had to deal with that. And you know how I dealt with it? Just block them. <laughs> Just block them. Like, you don't have to but engage. That's good. That's you know, good. One, of, one of the things that I find that it's, yeah, it, one of the things that I find that's really, it's easy to stoop down to that level and give a response yes. that's witty and like you're trying to get back at them and give them, you know, but really that just gives them more power in the sense. Yeah. So the, how do you deal with a bully? You ignore them. You just, you just don't take any of their crap. Yeah. Right. And look, if the guy wants to punch you, you punch him back. But if he's just going to talk smack to you, the hell it's like it's that old saying uh sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me now words are painful of course things have changed much in the modern world but (laughs) but taking that concept you should try to think about it in the sense of bounce back right when somebody tells you something mean or negative do you really believe it or do you say no you, you you're just not a part of my life anymore therefore what you're saying means nothing, right? You know, yeah. you're choosing to 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 let it affect you is what I'm saying. So bounce back from that. Say, I'm you gotta you gotta be like militaristic on this front. You gotta say, when there's a negative comment, you don't you just don't just don't accept that. You if it's not in line with what you're trying to do, um yeah. and and you get rid of that. You have to annihilate it immediately out of your out of your mental. Uh, mentality. So that was just my experience this week. I'm sure there's going to be more to come as I put more videos out there. But you know what? Bounce back, man. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and by the way, guys, I, I put a link. We just posted the link to Kiss. You'll see it in the comments. Ken's band breakup video. Oh, what thanks, cool man. Title, right? And uh, so just, just right-click on that, open that in a new tab, and then just pause that so you can finish watching this. But open that in a new tab, and then after we're after we you know we're done here it's an in interesting story or so you can go back and uh because <laughs> it is a very interesting story that ken gives and uh ken you also make sure you subscribe to ken's channel too, the home eric channel so you can keep up with what his band is doing uh you guys know how i have my own channel and i know most of you watching are part of that thank you by the way uh but make sure you go to ken's channel as well subscribe to that because he's making more content for home eric and ken you actually have a premiere this friday at noon that's right uh, uh right? saturday noon, this Eastern saturday Standard time yeah this Saturday at noon. Um, oh, so I'm sorry, Saturday at noon. My bad. Saturday at noon. Um, yeah, so, we'll so be, check that out, you know. Yeah, I'll be releasing a new video on how to actually come back from all of the, you know, trauma one may feel from a band yeah. breakup. So if you're in the middle That's of good. that or if you're alluding to that might happen, yeah. um, maybe this will be a video that you might be interested in watching. It might give some guidance because it really helped yeah. me uh, come back from where I was. I was in a big, deep depression after my band broke up. It wrecked me. So, hard, um, so hard, it man. is, it's cause it's, it's a marriage. It really is. And I state all of that in my video. It, it really is a marriage, uh, between the people that you're working with cause you're so closely knit creating wonderful music and all this kind of stuff. Um, but granted Jason is involved in Homeric too, guys. So <laughs> that's, that's what I'll say. He, he is it, absolutely dude. involved in Homeric. This is going to be an amazing collaboration. So I can't wait for you guys to hear it when it releases. Yeah, um, his guitar work is stellar. So thank you, bro. <laughs> um, and you know what? This just goes to prove that, hey, when, when a door closes in your life, a new one opens and you'd be yeah. surprised to know that, well, hey, it was way better than before. So you had a lot of doors open up, dude, for this thing. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate oh that. God, um, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, as, as things, time yeah. keeps going forward, more details will unfold and I'll let you guys know Definitely. what's going on. But um, yeah, Jason, tell us about your story, man. What happened this week? What you said you had a troll. Yeah. I I troll yeah, under I the a, bridge. I had my first live troll this week. So <laughs> I, you know, my my audience knows I, I like to go live every now and then on YouTube, probably once every couple of weeks. And um, a lot of times, man, I just like to sit and chat with my audience, and that's all we do. And uh, sometimes I'll do like a live concert or whatever, which I'm going to be doing this Saturday night. I'm going to be streaming my acoustic show this Saturday. Uh, if, if you guys go like to my blog post on YouTube, you'll see that. But I'll I'll be putting more fillers out there for it too. Um, yeah. But anyway, so I'll, I'll just when I'm changing my strings on my guitar, I'll I'll throw a little note out there and say, hey, guys, I'm going to go live is uh, I'll call it. Uh, what do I call it? Chat coffee and string changing with Jason, you know, 
<laughs> and I've had to change strings on three guitars in the past few weeks, so we've had a lot of lives. It's the most metal and, thing uh, ever. <laughs> yeah, so and you know, so th those things, it's, you're not like really coming there to see me play. You're just coming there. We just chat. I, I and I'll kind of show some interesting things. Like I've got the Goto locking tuners, which are awesome. So I featured <sighs> that, you know, because some guys don't don't have that. And once you have those, you don't go back to anything else. But uh, anyway, I had this guy come on, and um, and you know, he's he. I never usually I know the names of people because you know the same people come on which I'm really appreciative for by the way uh but there's some some cat came on there I think his name was JK or something like that and uh you know he says oh this is boring and I'm like I ignored it at first you know I'm like okay whatever he probably if it's boring don't watch you know and then he started saying other stuff and he started getting a little nasty I'm like so I called him out I'm like look dude you don't have to be here yeah if you don't want to just just leave leave the show there's plenty of other YouTube videos to watch right now uh you know, I'm, I'm, I'm chatting with my people here and because I yeah. consider my audience, my, my family, my metal family, I'm chatting with my people here. You know, we're having, we're hanging out, having a good time and here you come along disturbing us. If you don't like it, leave. So he didn't like my answer. And he said a few snide things. I don't even remember what he said. This is how, this is how thick skinned I am these days. I used to not be this way, by the way. Uh, but I'm like, all right, that's it. So the funny thing is, is YouTube, they've got like these three little dots by their name. They allow you, you can put them in timeout. You actually like, it's like, hey, go timeout, you know. So <laughs> been I was trying to ban him from the channel, but I, the first thing I saw was, okay, put him in timeout for like, uh, you know, 300, uh, 300 seconds or something or 300 minutes. I don't know what it was, something like that, five minutes. And uh, so I did that. He never came back. And, and I, I kind of, I didn't. I didn't apologize for the way I, I think I handled it well, but I asked my audience, I'm like, Hey guys, I'm sorry about that. But how, like, if I didn't handle that in the right way, please let me know. I just, you know, I, what I don't like to be mean to people. And actually I kind of felt bad for the guy. And this is one way I want you guys to look at things as well. If somebody's being just a complete dick, look at it in this way, look at it. That person is extremely insecure. They're not happy with what's going on in their life right now. They're probably dealing with some kind of pain, even though they're being a jackass. They're probably dealing with some kind of immense pain about themselves, some insecurities. And I started thinking, and when I started thinking like that, I wasn't so upset about the person anymore. I was, and I told my audience that I'm like, he, he probably, probably just has some deep insecurities, you know, because people do that. Um, yeah. You know, Ken, your band members, they probably have some really deep embedded insecurities because you're doing something that's really great and really like awesome and has this awesome potential. And they're not part of that anymore because of the decisions they made and how they chose to act towards the band and towards the project, right? So they've they missed an opportunity that they will never get again. So they have some deep insecurities based on that. And their behavior probably hasn't changed, right? So yeah. which is clear by the comments <laughs> they made towards you. It will always so, follow you, by the way. They will always yeah, follow you. Yeah. They'll always follow you. They'll they'll be your <laughs> trolls, but that's okay. You know, it's just and I think this happens when you start making headway in your life. You know, you're, you're going to have haters, like you said, you're going to have people, but you really just have to change the way you see those people. I don't get upset at these things anymore. I used to, I used to, man, somebody would say something negative about my music and like, Hey, you know, something stupid, your guitar's out of tune or this happened or that happened. And I would just let it bother me for like a week. And I'm like, well, maybe I should just quit this, you know? And I don't do that anymore. I used to have extreme like low confidence and, uh, and you just have to look at it in a different perspective and, like Joe Dirt says, you got to keep on keeping on, you know? Yep. Uh, but you just, you really can't let that stuff bother you. It's going to bother you for a little bit. It will. We're human. Uh, but you got to kind of grow some really thick skin and just know that the better you become, because all of you watching this video right now, you want to do something with your music. You want to put something out there. You'll have people that hate on you. Now, if you've got 20 people saying, Hey man, your, your voice is out of key here or your guitar playing, you know, okay, well you might want to listen, but <laughs> you know, have your stuff polished before you put it out. But again, you're going to have haters, you know? Yeah. I, the powerful words, man, because when you are moving forward and you know, the average person, if you're, if you're very mediocre, you probably have a lot of friends, <laughs> yeah. but as you strive above, to seek excellence. That list, will. That list <laughs> continues to dwindle and dwindle and dwindle because we have a natural tendency as humans, it's a flaw of jealousy, envy, yeah. and all of these other things. 
and um, insecurity being one of them, right? Because if somebody's doing better than you and you become, you grow jealous of that because you want it too, right? One of the main reasons is that people hate on others is that it's something that's within that person that they will never have, right? Yes. It's within you. It's not on you. It's not like, it's not like this shirt where you can buy this shirt too, right? Yeah. But you can't buy my skills, right? You can't, you can't, you can't get that because I have it. That's in me, right? So a lot of that echoes with people. And this is something that I, I've, you know, of course, realized that, you know, when I first started my band, it was very much, um, I wanted it to be a democratic sort of thing. There was multiple people involved. I wanted to have a lot of collaborators. And I still have a lot of collaborators now, but it's different, right? It's not so centrist about a group of, you know, people that are, you know, so-called the band. Um, yeah. The band really is me <laughs> and whoever I choose to collaborate, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, and I love that because it makes it so much more universal. Um, yeah. You know, you have the creator and the creations that come around that and their flavors of who's in it. It's like, you know, uh, to be a little bit biblical about it, it's like, you know, you got, um, you know, I'm not religious at all, but let's just take the Bible, for example. You know, God creates the world and he creates man in, in the Bible and man then creates the rest of man, which is the other faction of the collaboration, right? You set the foundation and everything else comes afterwards organically right this is in this instance you could say get a guitarist who knows how to play guitar to write the guitar parts for your music right <laughs> get a drummer who plays the drums really well to do the drums for your music right don't try and do all the other parts to it you know you can have an idea and then you can have other people join in on that and bring it to life is what i'm saying um so I, I, I live by that. That's what it is with my music and having that collaboration with others. You know, you do that with your own um, drummer as well, Jason, with your music. Yeah. Um, you, you give him some sort of a reference and he brings it to life and he adds his own flair to it. Um, yeah. it you, you'll, you'll find that it changes everything, um, how you do your music and gives you so much more power and almost like breathability uh, to knowing and knowing that this is a living creation. I love that, isn't it, right? So your music really does, it breathes life into things because now there's multiple minds that contribute their little portion to the overall picture, right? So. It does, and, and guys, real quick, Ken was just joking about him not being religious. He's actually a Pentecostal pastor that handles <laughs> snakes, so. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. Uh, no, but you, you know it, dude. It's, um, you know, you know, we talked about this on, <laughs> we talked about this a few live sessions ago, um, you know, and, and that was one of the choices you guys have that we gave you guys, like, do you really want a band? I mean, ban a band is a good thing. Band's not a bad thing, right? But we, you know, remember, Ken, we, we brought this up. Do you really want a band or do you want to just hire out the parts? Because sometimes it is better to, even in a band, you still have to have kind of that captain. You have to have that that seniority, that one level that <laughs> kind of drives everything, you know, that visionary. Mm -hmm. But uh, as, a, as a solo artist or, you know, home Eric's not really a solo artist thing. It is a band, but you're able to say, okay, these are the things I don't do well. So I want you to handle it. This is kind of what I want, but give me your feel on it. Like my drummer, uh, you know, I, I tell him, Hey, you know, I lay out the drums for him and easy drummers. Like this is kind of the feel I'm looking for, but you know what, at the end of the day, you're the drummer, you're going to make it sound more awesome. So I don't think I've ever once sent him, maybe one time I sent him back Hey, Hey, I just, maybe you want this part a little different or whatever. Right. Only, only like one song. But if you find somebody good to work with though, that's the key too. If you find somebody good to work with and just have them put in their piece and you're just, you're driving the boat or the ship or whatever, you know? So that's a, not, it's not a bad way to go. You guys who want to record, uh, you want to record your own album or record your own single, you know, Hey, just keep it under your name and, and hire out the parts you can't do. Yeah. And Ooh. you know, I find yeah. it, I find it more, most of the time it comes down to how much you trust that person. Yeah. Um, right. It, establishing huge. a relationship a working relationship with somebody is imperative 
right? So one of the things about being in a band, which could be good and bad, is that, well, you trust the person, but sometimes you trust them too much and they get lazy. Um, That's true. You know, so and if especially if there's no clear guidelines as to who's doing what. Right. Yeah. Um, So but when you're hiring out somebody, you know, the trust is the relationship that you are being faithful with, let's say, your timely payments. Right. If you're going to be having a payment plan, you got to make sure you're following through with that, because when you start to slack on that, well, then, you know, that's a service. Right. That you're paying for. And then that person, if you wanted to continue that service, they may not be all that excited about it. Right. So right. there's that. But then there's also, you know, in many cases, for example, with the artist. Right. You know, Jason, you you uh, hired even, you know, my own girlfriend to do the artwork who does fantastic yeah. paintings. Um, but when you're when you're hiring somebody, especially like artwork and what I was doing, my artwork for my project has been going on for a long time, a long time. I want to say it's almost two years now that this artwork has been going on for. So I'll these paintings, I mean, we're talking about m- mac- like minimum 10 paintings for this album. Like what? <laughs> who, who does that? <laughs> so, so these paintings take a long time to do. And I have to have this relationship with my artist, right? That he is knowing that I'm going to back him up. I'm always going to back him up and he's always going to back me up. And I pay him what he's worth. I pay him what he's worth because I want to do that. Because when I do that, it says the, it sends the signal of I value you, right? Yes. This is what you are worth. So whatever it is that you do, in this case, it's art and painting. It is worth it to me to invest that within you because I know what it's going to do for me. So right. have right. at it, right? That's the signal that you send. Same thing with other collaborators or story writers or musicians, right? You want to pay people what they're worth. It makes them feel good. It makes them feel valued. And it means that you're serious, right? So you have to take that all into account. I love having a band because of the camaraderie that you get from it. But sometimes that camaraderie can get in the way if things are not organized. And unfortunately for me, it became unorganized in that sense. And it led to a whole debacle. And that's okay. It means if something failed, it means something was wrong. And you learn from that and you move on. You bounce back, right? So let that just be something that you take away also from this video. Um, yeah, that, that's all I got to say about that. No, that's a good point. I, I know we're talking about it. I mean, this kind of revolves around, you know, we're talking about the mind. You know, my, but We didn't spend a whole lot of time on the body, but... Uh, you know, we can talk more about that at some some other time. But, um, you know, the mind, that's first and foremost, we, we have to have that mindset, you know, instilled within us that, you know, not only it's not it's more than just positive thinking, right? It's more than just saying, well, I'm going to be positive today. You know, it's more so having that goal in your embedded in your heart so deeply that as soon as you wake up, that's the first thing that's on your mind. And everything is going to kind of revolve around you progressing towards that. You know what I mean? Uh, and your body's part of that. So you want to wake up in the morning. So you want to go to the gym and train and, and you know, that sets the, that might be the thing that set your tone for the day, or, or maybe it's meditation or maybe it's doing yoga or something like that. You've got that thing that you do physically that you get out of the way first thing in the morning and then you head off to do your other task, whether it's writing that song that day, whether it's uh, working with your drummer or collaborating with a guitar player, vocalist, you know, you've, you've already got that mental strength because the, the physical strength equi- can equate to the mental strength, right? Because if you can push yourself to do things in the gym and push yourself a little bit harder, uh, even meditation can, that's, um, you know, I, I guess I meditate a little bit different ways, but uh, meditation in general, though, you kind of have to push yourself to do that. Some people can't sit there and, and clear their mind. It's a conscious effort that you make when you meditate to clear your head of all the things that are trying to come in. And that was probably hard for you to do at first. But once you learn, all this is like self-mastery is what it is. It's a lifelong battle. Everything is self-mastery. So and that's just that, that's just what you're doing. You're setting the tone for the rest of your day. You master yourself, and then you're going to be able to tackle those other things that you've got to handle throughout the day as well, far more efficiently. You know, 
so meditation real quick what how was that was that kind of uh difficult at first ken when uh, you first got into that definitely um i started out with a shorter amount of time period um yeah nowadays i do anywhere between 25 to 30 minutes of it but um in the beginning i just did 10 minutes um and that was difficult uh <laughs> Because I bet, dude, I you're bet. you're 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 figuring because you're always asking you know, like am I doing this correctly or whatnot and the there's yeah. no real right way to meditate that's the tricky thing right so the the idea of meditation is to uh, help to live in the moment that's the purpose of it and to recognize the thoughts that come into your head objectively this is sort of that opening of the third eye kind of yeah. concept where. You're being an observer to everything that comes in. So if you if a thought comes into he, into your head, you have to not respond to that thought, yeah. but to take a step back and understand where that thought came from. <laughs> so okay. that's part of it, right? Um, and then just say, okay, thank you, goodbye, right? One thing that helps is just say, okay, thank you, goodbye, and then I like that. I like come that. back into the moment again whether that's listening to the music, the soundscape that you're, you're trying to meditate to, things of like, like that nature, they help. Um, but it, yeah. it, it's, it's all about just awareness. What are you feeling right now? How is your body feeling? How is your mind? What, is, what are the thoughts that are coming to your head? Don't respond to them, right? That's a key thing. Don't respond to them. Just acknowledge them. And that's it. That's all you have to do, like that. right? Because by doing that, then you're starting to look at a bigger picture of who you are and how you, how do you respond to things. And if you have a tendency, a habit to respond to things a certain way, like what is giving you, for example, rage? What it gives you rage? How, why are you getting the rage, right? These are the questions we ask. And meditation helps to clarify that. It takes a while. It takes a while. You're not going to find it on your first session. The first session, you're just going to be like, oh, am I doing this correctly? Am I sitting right? Oh, my back hurts because I'm so straight up. I don't know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's going yeah. to be a process. And, you know, sometimes I still get thoughts in my head where I'm just like, oh, I'm freaking responding to this thing. <laughs> and it's like I'm not actually yeah. being in the moment. So um, it's tough. That, it, it is tough. It is tough. Um, and it, that's a thing, man. Um, you know, just... Focusing on the moment is one of the hardest things to do. Um, a, a famous author, his name is Eckhart Tolle. Um, he, he doesn't even meditate, and he's like one of the most woke people in this planet. But he, he's his his uh, analysis of everything is just he's always constantly just being in the moment, not trying to predict the future, not trying just always being in the moment. How how is everything going now? There, there's some balance to that, of course. You know, like. He has a schedule to keep and stuff, but there are certain things that he just lives in the moment for, right? He just doesn't worry so much, right? Worry comes from something in the future that's to happen, right? And that's why you're worried. But if you're not thinking about the future, there is no worry. So that's kind of a concept that I like. Um, it's hard to I grasp. Like too. It's hard to grasp. Because we're always thinking about, you know, how we're, especially with the music, right? We're always thinking about how do we move forward with the music, oh, right? And we're always yeah. thinking about the future. But sometimes you got to just back off a little bit and just, what is, what, is, what is going on right now? What is going on right now, right? Where are you? Are you sitting in a comfy chair? <laughs> are you yeah. listening to Metal Mastermind, right? Are you absorbing this information? Are you... Trying to just That's what you should be doing. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's so many things to take away from that. But I think in all in all, it, 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 be, it comes down to just being more aware of your surroundings, of who you are. Yeah. And that's where meditation. If you if you can do that once you've had a successful session uh, of meditation and don't worry if you haven't gotten there yet, um, it, it's a process. So allow yourself the time to do it, um, and you'll, you'll start to see a little bit more clarity come with the practice of it, because it is a practice. You, it's not just something that you can just do, you know, willy-nilly. I mean, you could do it, but it's, it's a practice. You need to keep consistent at it, to keep doing that. Um, and that's the thing, right? It, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention before we go, because we're almost out of time here, but is um, mental triggers, 
uh, something that I think really uh, can help you is to limit the amount of, let's say, mental triggers that give you, uh, let's say, uh, satisfaction. For example, video games is a big mental trigger for me. <laughs> I love video games, right? But if I keep mm-hmm. playing video games, I'm just going to be thinking about the video game. Because my mind, my brain, as a biological thing, it just knows that playing the video game gives me joy, right? So I know it's not good for me because I know I'm wasting time, but my brain is just like, yeah, but you just beat this boss and now you're on your road to the final one and you're going to level up (laughs) to ultimate victory. And it's just like oh, man, you know, it's not going to do anything for me, though, you know? So these mental triggers, limiting the (laughs) amount of mental triggers in your life will help you to feel even more excited and more engaged about what you're doing with your music, what you're doing with your career, Um, because then the mental trigger becomes the little victories that you do with your music, that you do with your career, right? So watch less Netflix, watch, play less video games, watch less of the news. <laughs> Those are all mental triggers that give you some sort of satisfaction. Like, right. If you're watching something political, you're just like, yeah, I agree with this person. Yeah, we're winning. Woohoo. Right. Or with your, you know, anything, anything of this sort. And I don't want to get too much into politics, but it's just the idea of getting a cleaner slate for yourself and putting new, uh, sources of pleasure that will help you to grow as a musician. Um, you have to be analyzing that first. That may, maybe that'll come. That answer will come in your meditation. Who knows? Um, or in your Very workout. Maybe you feel much more. In, in, this might inspire you to do more workouts. That's a great trigger to keep you going, right? So um, little things like that. They really do help uh, in, in the in the long term. Yeah, and it's it's you're creating good habits with that as well. Like exactly. you know, going back to the working out thing. Like when I, uh, uh, a lot of times when I get to the gym, it's early in the morning. Um, I'm listening to something motivational on the way there, and as soon as I park my car, I find myself sitting in the car for like ten or fifteen minutes, just jotting down ideas because that's when these ideas start coming. I'm like, okay, ideas. I'm supposed to go work out now, but they're just coming, so I put them in a notepad in my phone. Then of course I listen to music. I listen to metal music during my workout. Uh, and, and then once I'm on the treadmill, I, I study, a, you know, a language, you know, and I studied uh, a few different languages, but mainly Thai. So uh, having those rituals, though, those things are super important to great, how great word. you progress throughout the day, big time. And, uh, you know, because if not, then those rituals that you should have will be replaced with just garbage and junk that gets you nowhere. And, uh, you know, you need some downtime you know, gunning wrong. Like Ken, you were saying earlier about working 12 hours, 14 hours a day or whatever, you do need some downtime. And what I find for me is I give my myself a little reward system. Like I know if I was not, I had to be productive to a certain point, for example, before I let myself have a beer. Right. <laughs> and, and usually I just drink beer and it's kind of random when I have a beer too. But if I have not accomplished much that day, then I won't allow myself to have that beer. And even when I'm doing stuff in the morning time, like after my workout, uh, you know, have a cup of coffee or whatever, but then, okay, I know I need to do this project that's going to take me two hours. I'm not getting up to eat or have another cup of coffee until that's done. And when I cross that finish line, I'm like, okay, now I feel comfortable rewarding myself with that. Before, what would happen is after 30 minutes of, let's say, writing a blog post or working on music, I'd say, okay, well, I need that cup of coffee. So I'd get up and get a cup of coffee. Then I yeah. you know, find something to eat. And then, you know, and then all of a sudden it just snowballs. It's like, okay, 20 minutes has gone by and I'm still getting coffee and I could have been doing my work, you know? So it, I think it's important to have, to kind of like schedule in your own mind, these little, these little parameters throughout the day, but then reward yourself when you cross the finish line on certain things. And that just kind of helps you keep motivated to keep celebrate keep the going. little victories, man. The yeah, little victories too. are, they really help because it keeps you motivated, right? You want to you want to enjoy the process. You don't want to punish yourself. Uh, I'm guilty of doing that. <laughs> I'm sure Jason in some in some many ways you you may have been guilty of doing that, right? And you're just like, "Damn, I didn't do this." So, okay, no no nothing for me or whatever. It's like, you know, it's like you got to treat yourself with respect uh, and don't degrade yourself. 
it just leads you down a path of you know feeling awful about what you're doing and you that's the last thing you want to do is feel awful about what you're doing if you didn't get it done today fine just get back on the horse the next day okay just that's all you got to do that's 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 simple as that and you don't have to beat yourself over it it doesn't get you anywhere so um i think that 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 that's a great way to wrap this up jay um you want to you wanna say any, any last words before we go? Yeah, uh, real quick, guys. I think a lot of you have the studio guide, the free studio guide that we give away. Uh, I just put the link to that in the description of this video. So if you don't have that, go ahead and snag your copy of that now. Um, and you'll be put on our email list as well. And that's kind of how we keep in touch with you to let you know uh, what's going on with Metal Mastermind, when the live events are, because we we're going to keep the schedule every other week. Uh, you know, for, for now that seems to be working out and Ken and I are, are just putting a lot more content out there. So make sure you are subscribed to this channel. You're getting the notifications, but also snag your studio guide as well, because we also, we also put a lot of, uh, tutorials out there in the form of blog posts, which go a little bit more in depth than what you're going to get anywhere else. Watch well, a little bit more. It's a lot more in depth because we spent a lot of time writing. Uh, so, you know, definitely, definitely get our email list there. And we let you know when that stuff is released for you. And this is all, all the stuff we're doing is just content to help you as metal musicians. You know, we, we cover some of the mental aspects as well, but we also, you know, Ken and I both give you uh, a lot of just practical stuff that you can start applying like right away in your music in your recording and producing and all that stuff in your studio. So, you know, I'm real happy and honored to be doing this with Ken. So de definitely take advantage of all the stuff that we have guys. Likewise, man. With that being said, horns up. Yep, horns up, guys. See you <laughs> next time. <laughs> we'll see you next time.